All right, my friends, pretend we're playing a game of uncle and you've got my arms pinned behind my back and I have to choose the last sleeping bag that I would ever sell for my backpacking and camping trips. Which, do kids even play uncle anymore? What I've got here in front of me are high quality, really great sleeping bags that I have personally used and loved and just would recommend to anybody to use for their backpacking. But which one is my favorite? Which one is the last bag that I would sell for my backpacking? The first bag to get the boot is the Sea to Summit Spark. Now this happens to be the Spark 4, so it is the five degree rated down sleeping bag. Now I truly do love this bag and I've been using it for over two years at this point. I love to use it in the winter months when it's really cold, use a liner inside of it and just enjoy a nice, warm, comfortable sleeping experience. But this bag has two very specific things that make it so that I would not keep it. Number one is the fabrics that are used on this bag. They are an ultralight type of fabric and because of that, they're really sticky. So when you've been all sweaty and you're grimy and gross and you get into your sleeping bag, it just like catches and holds on to you and it's not the best hand feel against your skin. The other aspect is the zipper. There have been plenty of times that on this sleeping bag, I struggle so much at the top of the zipper when I'm trying to get out in the middle of the night to go pee that the zipper gets stuck and I'm just like fiddling and fiddling and fiddling and it constantly has problems in like it's doing it right now even though I'm not inside it. It's not the greatest zipper and it doesn't have a great zipper track for you to avoid getting the zipper stuck into that. So they're using a number three sized zipper which obviously saves weight, but those little things make a big difference in the overall experience of the bag. It's a very comfortable sleeping bag, but it is not at the top of the list and it gets the boot off of the table as a bag that I would end up selling because of those two specific reasons. All right, next on the list is the Cumulus Lightline 400. What I absolutely love about the Cumulus product is the amazing value that you get out of this bag that you can also customize. It's the only bag on the list today that you can truly customize for the amount of length, the fill, the width, and just the fabrics that are used. It's truly a fantastic product in that sense. So other aspects to this that kind of make it not top out on my favorite bag of all time is just very subtle things. The zipper does get caught. It doesn't have a great piece of ribbon in here that stops the zipper from getting caught. You're gonna hear me talk about this a lot because I want easy in and out of my sleeping bag. I don't want to be fiddling with pulling fabric out of the zipper every time I wanna get in and out of the bag. The other thing that is a bit harder for me is the foot box is a bit tighter than I would like. Otherwise, this is an amazing value for a sleeping bag. I think Cumulus has just created a product that is very affordable, very accessible, and provides that customization ability that makes it one of the best options, I think, for a sleeping bag in a lightweight budget category than anything else out there on the market. So now we're into the top three of the list and this is the Mountain Hardware Bishop Pass 650 fill power down sleeping bag. And this bag has probably surprised me the most of any bag that I've used over the past year. In terms of the price point that it hits at just under $300 and the comfort aspect and just the overall quality that you get out of this bag, it's just amazing. And I think one of the absolute best values in a sleeping bag that you can get on the market right now. One of the aspects about the Bishop Pass that I absolutely love is the consistency of warmth that I've experienced from this bag. I've had it out multiple nights into freezing temperatures and I have been warm and comfortable every single time that I have been in this bag. And I can't say that about all of the other bags. There's cold spots or there are slight issues that have made it not as comfortable. And even being 650 fill power, it's still 
lightweight, but two things about it that knock it off of the list are the fact that because it is 650 fill power, the pack size of the bag is a bit bigger. But then also this bag is a shape that not everybody is going to enjoy. It is the narrowest, most traditional mummy shaped bag that we'll talk about today that has the probability of being the most constrictive, the most uncomfortable for somebody that's got big, broad shoulders, you're a taller person, that kind of thing. And so knowing that ahead of time, you could maybe save yourself some of the trouble of this bag being a bit more constrictive than other options. But you do have a really nice sized foot box that doesn't end up with cold spots. The zipper moves really smooth on this. It's got a way better track on here than some of the others, but it's still not 100%. But at a $300 price point, you can't beat it. It's just a seriously fantastic sleeping bag. Okay, so number two and number one on the list, they're almost a tie because it's really hard for me to choose between the Zen Bivy light bed or the bed that we've got here in front of me and number one that we're gonna talk about here after this. But I absolutely love the Zen Bivy sleep system, the bed system. This has been one of the most enjoyable sleep experiences that I have had over the past year and a half of using the Zen Bivy system. It is so versatile, it is so comfortable, and it is just a really well designed, really well thought out sleeping system. Now technically, this is not a sleeping bag. So that's part of the reason that I'm saying it's kind of in a tie with number one because it does provide the bed experience that you want when you're out on a backpacking trip. Is the Zen Bivy bed perfect? No, it's not. There are some limitations to this that make it not the best option in all cases. The first being that it is not a sleeping bag. So you are working with a quilt system. So if you do not pair this properly with the correct insulation underneath you for the conditions that you're gonna be sleeping in, then you're not gonna enjoy your sleeping experience as much because so much of your sleep is contingent on the insulation that you have underneath you. That is a big part of making this an effective and comfortable and awesome sleep system. But what I do love about the Zen Bivy bed is that it is simple. It's got zippers here on the side for you to get in and out of this really easy. They don't add a significant amount of weight to the bag, but because this is a quilt system, those zippers on this wing here that attaches to the sheet that goes on top of your sleeping pad is what makes this eliminate drafts and make it so that as you're tossing and turning and moving around inside of the bag, you're able to be more comfortable and not have a bunch of drafts and stuff come into the bag and lose all that heat that's trapped inside of the bag. Other aspects that I love about this that you've seen me talk about many times with Zen Bivy is I love the sheet and the insulated hood that is oversized because I can put my pillow in there, I can wrap my arm around my pillow and have that insulation value up around for my arm so I don't get cold that way. That is a huge deal in the overall sleep experience of this bag. You've got all of the options with the zippered uh, foot box and the ability to open this up a bit more and use it like a blanket in that, in that way. So you've created versatility with the sleep system. One of the things to note about the bed specifically is because you have more zippers, you've got more fabric and such, this is a heavier option than a lot of other things that are out there. In fact, the next bag we're gonna talk about is significantly lighter. If you do wanna save some weight is to go with the Zen Bivy light bed. This is going to eliminate all of the zippers that you have with the bed from Zen Bivy. And the light bed can also utilize this fast sheet, which you could uh, use with their core quilt as well. So you have the options, but by eliminating those zippers, you've got these clips and those clips make it so that it's pretty easy to get in and out. 
Now, the Zenbivy bed does have insulation in the wings. On the light bed, there's no insulation on the wings. You still have that convertible type of foot box with the Zenbivy light bed, but there's no zippers and it uses clips as well for you to close that up or open it up for more of a blanket type feel. But both of these bed systems are fantastic. Some of the best nights of sleep that I've ever had out on a backpacking trip is because of sleeping in the Zenbivy. I absolutely love these bags and think that they're just worth having in your arsenal of sleeping bags. All right, the very last bag I would ever sell is the Western Mountaineering Ultralight 20 degree down sleeping bag. If you have been following the channel for any period of time, you know how much I love this Western Mountaineering bag. Now, right up front, this bag is very expensive at about $600. What I love about this is it's US made and it is the most high quality sleeping bag that I have ever been able to sleep in. It is so well constructed that I will know that I can rely on this for years and years and years and years. This is going to last me a very, very long time and the quality of the fabrics, the quality of the down, the construction, this is the cream of the crop, just a phenomenal sleeping bag. But what drawbacks does it have? When you compare it to the Zen Bivy that we just talked about, it doesn't have as much of a bed experience as the Zen Bivy does. It is much more tapered, much more of a traditional mummy shape. What is the consistency in the experience for me with this bag is the fact that every time I use this, I am comfortable, I enjoy my sleep, and I get good sleep. And I'm not a big guy to start with. So having a more traditional shaped bag like this isn't as constrictive for me. I don't find it claustrophobic. I'm able to move around and enjoy my sleep in this because of that. But we've talked a lot about zippers as well in this discussion today. The Western Mountaineering has the best zipper I have seen on a sleeping bag to date. Hardly at all, if ever, do I have fabric get stuck in the zipper. The track has a like one inch or wider, really robust uh, kind of stiff ribbon that's in there that it doesn't really get stuck. I mean, it did just there, but it happens so very little that it doesn't become an issue when you're trying to get out of your bag in the middle of the night to go to sleep or to go pee, <laughs> I should say. It's just very comfortable. Little details with the draft collar around the neck make it uh, sleep extra warm. The uh, differential cut of the bag, meaning that the inside of the bag is smaller than the outside of the bag. So when you push your knees or your feet or arms, shoulders and such against the inside fabric, it is not going to create cold spots because it can't push against the outside fabric. So you're always gonna have a nice bit of loft uh, for your sleeping and not getting cold spots that way. Now I talked a little bit about the fabrics of this. Now I will say that the fabrics of the Ultralight are not as soft as the Zen Bivy, which is a drawback for me. However, it doesn't act very sticky like the Spark does. It's just so worth the investment because it's going to last a very, very long time. And that is a reason enough for you to invest into something that's going to last you a decade or longer and is just a really high quality, good product, US made, and I just love it. So thanks for watching today, guys. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe. I hope you have an awesome day. We'll catch you on the next one. See you later.